Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tune Review for tonight's, uh, well, a little bit different show. Normally on a Sunday night, of course, we do the actual uh, match review. Uh, however, tonight, uh, nothing like that because we don't play till Wednesday night, of course. And it is uh, just a show basically catching up on last week's news. Thought we'd just have a more in-depth look at it with me and Billy tonight um, and get your guys' views on it as well. Um, but, Billy, we've just seen a, a very interesting uh, FA Cup semi-final. Um, Man United cruising at 3-0. Uh, everybody seems to switch it off and, and not bother because we think, ah, what's the point? And Coventry come back and, to be honest, are robbed, I think, because that was as, as close as an offside as you're going to get. And I just wonder if that was at the other end of the pitch, if that would have been disallowed. I mm. have been out. No, I don't know. I think offside isn't subjective, is it? It's, 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 it's either or not, and it was. And Stato joining us, good stuff. He is Stato's joining us. It, it's off, it? it's off, it's offside. It's as simple as that. The lines prove it. You can't kind of argue against an offside decision. Well, um, with the lines, or not, can you? Well, uh, with the yeah, lines, not. Ex I, I thought those lines were pretty close together, Billy. I, I'm I'm disappointed that wasn't given. I thought I think, it was off. I was I thought it was off before the lines come up. If I'm perfectly honest. Well, I think everybody did, but then he, he played on and thought, wow. And then when you saw the replay, but then uh, you know. Casemiro's penalty. I'm sorry, but if you take a penalty like that, you deserve to be knocked out. It was a disgrace. Mm. It just took Coventry till they were three down to actually think, well, let's go for it. If they'd have gone through it, to yeah. too, much, too much respect for them. Yeah. But if you've watched Manchester United over the past two years, you realise that they're not a good side. They've mm. got a couple of good individuals. They don't play as a team. And if you get out of them, they bottle it. And Coventry didn't do that till they were three down. And once yeah. they did, it was, it was you know, they didn't let, left themselves not enough time to win it. I mean, it's typical Man United, isn't it, Alex? You know, they they they, they always somehow scrape through. Um, it, it, an absolute joke of a second half from Manchester United. Um, but you you know, you've got to give Coventry the credit for what they did in that game. They they battled, didn't put the heads down at three nil. And like Billy said, maybe had they gone for it a little early instead of paying too much respect to Manchester United, things might have been a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, all, all of the above. Um, I mean, I. I find myself trying not to be too harsh on Manchester United purely because I've got a lot of people, a lot of sort of friends and family that support them, but I just don't care. I just hate them so much. They just, they just, I don't know, riding on the coattails of their own past. Seemingly, people are scared of them, scared to play against them when they're not a good side. They should be languishing down. I would say even not in the top ten. I don't think they're good enough to. I don't think their performances have have justified that. I don't think they're playing better football than than sort of Wolves or Brighton or West Ham or us at all this season. I think they should be down in the bottom half of the table. Um, they've got absolute rats who play for them. Uh, I think they're being mismanaged. I think the ta tactical approach from Ten Hag was poor. Um, I think they're mismanaging players out of position. I don't think Matomane's used very well. And I think Matomane is actually a great player. He's doing really, really well in, in moments. And I think he's just not being used at all correctly. Casemiro's yeah, legs yeah. again have fallen off. It was Poor recruitment. Anthony's showing himself up. Rashford's showing himself up. He's lazy. Again, lazy, lazy, lazy Rashford. And yeah. I, I hope he's not on that plane because he does not deserve it. Well, he will it. be. He will be, um, Alex. You know as well as I do that, that Rashford will be on that plane. And, you know, if it's at the expense of Anthony Gordon, then it's a, it's an absolute disgrace. But, it, you know, Man United fans uh, were, were going nuts with him in the first half. So get him off, get him off. Um, Andy Ford says there, Goldbridge's watch-along was priceless. Um he, he went berserk when Hoyland scored the winner, um, but he, he, he sort of went berserk, but then sort of said that it's because I'm a Man United fan, we've got into the, the final of the FA Cup. No matter how we've got there, we've got there. And I'm sure we no, would have fair. been the same had we been watching. That's fair. But he did say um, maybe they were robbed uh, because of the, the offside goal. So he's not 100% sure either. Oh, well, offside, you've mentioned it twice, right? So the offside... Again, the lines the lines are touching, which I thought they made comments about changing that, and mm. also the 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 furthest back line, which was for Wambasaka, was actually on his own foot. So I I, I I'm not a hundred percent convinced by the application of of the lines there and the use. I, I, mm, I don't know. I'm not buying it, and I feel like again when when something is that close, I don't think offside should ever be something that's definitively off or on. Um, I feel like it has always been historically benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt goes to the attacker, and you can't apply that logic, which always used to be applied, when it's either on or off. Um, and it's it's 
just silly at this point because you can I never said really Billy know. Alex, actually, before you came on, if that was at the other end, I'm I'm I, I eagerly wondering what that decision would be if it was at the other end and it was Manchester United who'd mm. score. Uh, uh, just with, with the way that things have gone in the league this season and the decisions that you know the cartel clubs continue to get. Um, but anyway, uh, what I do want to talk about first of all is the situation with Gateshead. Now, I'm not sure whether you you guys know this, um, Alex and Billy. I have seen it, yeah. Um, Gateshead have been uh, basically the council have told Gateshead that they're not going to be playing in the playoffs. Um, it, 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 it absolute disgrace. Andy mentions it there. Uh, Gateshead kicked out of the playoffs because the council wouldn't guarantee a 10-year extension to the lease of the stadium. Uh, they've been there since 1971. Um, Pete mentions it as well. Thank you, Peter, for your super chat. Uh, he says, um, uh, even and all, I'm absolutely gutted for Coventry. It's a disgrace with what has happened to Gateshead too. I mean, uh, look, th this thing, Alex, uh, with Gateshead, they've done really well to get into the playoffs this season in the National League. Have a chance of uh, promotion to, of course, the Football <laughs> League. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, they've, they've had a change of manager mid-season when, you know, well, not mid-season, actually, a bit later on than that, when uh, Williamson decided to go to McDonald's and, um, you know, Rob Elliott come in and done a fabulous job getting them in the playoffs. And then it's all taken away from them by a, a, a stingy council who won't guarantee the 10-year extension of the lease. It's a disgrace. It's one of the reasons why clubs in the lower league need the FA Cup replays. It's a prime example yep, yep, of that. There you go. Yeah, it's it's one of those where because a lot of the time clubs at that level need to make their own luck. That you know that their weight they need and relying on funding um, and grants and support and, and things to roll their way. It's it's the luck of the draw a lot of the time, mm, mm. Um, and it's it's an archaic rule. I talked about this recently with things like. Um, down in the, in the depths of the lower leagues, there are certain teams who actively try not to get promoted because they can't afford to get promoted because they would need to to sort of upgrade their infrastructure and put in things like floodlights and ad additional seating and things like that. There are certain rules up and down the pyramid. Um, and it, it's just a shame that this isn't necessarily even in their control, really. It's just a council decision about guaranteeing the stadium for, for X amount of time. Mm. Um, and it's... It's, it's just silly, really, because I'm not even sure a fundraiser could fix it. I think it's just down to a decision, isn't it? Yeah, it's down to a decision because Gated Council, uh, I think, are want to sell the stadium as it is. They, they, they don't want to be in control of that stadium anymore, and they, they, they want to sell it. Um, I think it's very short-sighted, though, because if they get into well, the football is. pyramid, if they get into the EFL, into the top four leagues... It's more money for them. You know, it, 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 you know it's more money all round, but unfortunately... I think this has been rumbling on for quite a long time. The Gateshead do want to, the council want to get rid of owning the stadium. Now, I don't know if that means that anyone else would take the stadium on and run it as a stadium, or if like a housing company bought it, they would knock the stadium down. But a lot of people have come on the chat, Billy, and said, well, shouldn't Newcastle step in here and maybe offer a ground share, uh, you know, so that they could possibly stay? But listen, I understand where they're coming from, Billy, but Gateshead are nothing to do with Newcastle United. And there, there is a, you, you've got to have a separation here. Um, I know they could, you know, step in and say, yeah, we could have a ground share with Gateshead, but the logistics might not work. And especially with St. James's Park possibly going to be under uh, redevelopment shortly, mm. you know, Newcastle wouldn't be able to commit to Gateshead for a long term as well. So I do think there's, options there, but I just think the council have operated in a despicable manner here, given the success that Gateshead have had this season. I think it's the timing of it that's a, that's a killer for me. If, yeah. if they were kind of worried about what was going to happen to the stadium, why didn't they tell them earlier and give them a chance mm. to get something else on board? Councils all over the country have had the funding slashed and it's hard for, for councils to, to, to make their own money. We've mm. seen councils going bankrupt left, right and centre in England because government have slashed council funding. Uh, certainly ones, that, especially ones that are in the labour um, operation. It's a political thing, but there you go. Um, so that's that, you know, but it is a bit wrong for the council to kind of leave it this late. They could have at least given some time to try and work something else out. Mm. And apparently, I've just seen in the comments that they have actually okayed it now, but it's too late. The AFL won't let them go in saying rules are rules. So it seems a bit well, odd to me, that does. Uh, um... Uh, I'm I'm not sure about that about Gateshead changing the council changing the mind. 
because I think uh, the fact of the matter is that they, they used to have a fantastic athletics meeting at Gateshead as well. If you remember mm. back in the day, um, I went to a few with my family. Uh, my dad used to take me quite, you know, you see some of the big names coming to Gateshead um, regularly uh, every year. That seems to have just disappeared as well. There's, there's not much going on. Um, and it's the football team that are really giving Gateshead the, the, the sort of pinpoint on the map. And to turn around now and do it, and you know, even if the council have turned around and, and revoked what they said, like you say, Billy, it's too late now because other fixtures have been arranged, and the team that is stepping into Gate said shoes will have already been notified, and it just creates a, a, a really difficult situation. So Gate said have been robbed here. So if the council are now going to turn around and say, "Well, there you go, you can have the ten-year extension to the lease." However, the council are trying to sell it. Where does that leave Gateshead? You know, they're guaranteed a 10-year lease at the stadium, but the council want to sell the stadium. How does it work for the lease? They can't guarantee that that company who's going to buy the stadium will, will A, keep it as a stadium, or B, keep Gateshead at the stadium. It's, it's, it's a bit of a farce. It really is. And, you know, I feel so sorry for them because it's a... You know, I've been to a few Gateshead games this season. Uh, they've played really well. They've got some very good football players. And... You know, finishing the playoffs of the National League, guys, is not an easy thing. I mean, no. that is a, a really competitive league. Let's not forget that. And to be robbed of it, I just think is 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 absolutely shocking. It's, it's one of the hardest things to go up from. I'd be worried yeah. more about the long term future if the stadium is being kind of earmarked for other things. They need to find themselves a new home pretty sharpish, I'd say. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, but where? I mean, where? Because. You know, I don't think they've got the money to to build a, a, a you know a stadium for themselves. I know there's a lot of football clubs around Gateshead, um, but obviously Gateshead playing in the National League, they have to have certain standards of of stadium, don't they? So, um, you know, I think that the higher you go up in the football pyramid, the the rules change on your, your, you know your home ground and how it should be. And I think Gateshead are in that difficult predicament now of trying to find. A, you know, if they are trying to find a new ground where they're going to fit in with the the, the, the Vanarama National League, you know, rules. Uh, it's it's just such a pity for them because they've done so well. I think it's it's shambolic. And again, this is what I'm going to do a, a sort of um, a few shows on, uh, you know, about Northeast football when I'm going to go traveling around the grounds and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, this is exactly what it's meant to be, you know, a, a sort of demise of Northeast football from you know, having loads of teams in the Football League to now, you know, not even getting the chance to put a team in the Football League. I just think it's wrong. It's, it's just, um, un, it's unprofessional from the league because these kinds of things should have been, this should have been sorted as the season starts. Mm. All of these things should be in place at the start of the season. You can't be having two thirds, three quarters of the way through seasons, people saying, well, this needs to be okayed or briefed or or signed off on before this can happen and that can happen. Or you could go up or you could be in a playoff. This should all be done at the start of a season. Um, and again, it's just moving the goalpost. So Luton got promoted, but got to, like they didn't have a Premier League standard stadium, were told they had to make improvements, but got the time to do that. Mm -hmm. They even got allowances to start the season late and not play home fixtures first. But Gateshead are not allowed the opportunity to do that. It, it's, it, it's again, three shows in a row, guys. Arbitrary lines in the sand for no reason to suit the people with the money. We're just making random rules up at this point. And it's just it's just hurting people and clubs. It's just stupid. It's just yeah. unnecessary. Uh, Tom says there, the problem is like a lot of councils, Gateshead funding has been slashed uh, and they've had to cut leisure services and are looking at selling the international stadium. Uh, but surely something can be well, done. How much money Shearer got nowadays? Get a consortium together. Well, it's it's not just that, is it? It's it's it's. It's the principle of it all. I mean, the, the, you know, if Gateshead got promoted, that would just generate more money for the council because they yeah. could suddenly start putting their rent up for Gateshead, for the football club. They could make money out of it. More parking, it, it, more days out, more absolutely. youth facilities, more structure. Northeast gets better and better. It's the whole point. It's it's just... But if you, if you look at what, what these councils do with their funding, even though it's been slashed, you look at it and you think, well, you know... They go out and do certain things which are mind-boggling, spending millions of pounds on stuff that really doesn't need to be spent on. And then you've got a football club who are really ambitious, really doing well, and a chance of getting into a professional league, into the football league, and bringing 
bringing quite a good status on Gateshead itself. You know, we know that Gateshead's had a bit of a revamp over the years. You know, it's 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 been, um, you know, there's a lot of new development there and things like that. And it has changed over the years, certainly since I was a kid. And the, the chance now, but, you know, I don't, do I ever think that Gateshead should have played at the International Stadium? No, because it was just, it doesn't really seem like a football ground. Um, and I think everybody that goes will know that because uh, I don't agree. And I think, Billy, you hate the running tracks around. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an athletic pitches. stadium, isn't it? It's as yeah. simple as that. And it's too yeah. open for it to be a football stadium. Mm-hmm. Way too open. Yep. I mean, even when we went there to Friendly at the start of the season, you saw Newcastle fans over the other side with that sort of fake roof thing on. Um, you know, there's, no, there's, there's no point having the roof because they got <laughs> soaked. Um, <laughs> it, it, a lot of people are asking, could PIF buy the stadium? Uh, th- th- nothing to do with Newcastle United. That's the thing. It, 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 you know, as much as I hate to say that, I just hope you know where I'm coming from here, guys, is the fact that it's nothing to do with Newcastle. Newcastle won't look at Gateshead Football Club and think, oh, you know, let's 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 buy them or let's do this, let's do that. Newcastle have their own uh, their own goals and ambitions and 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 fulfilments to to do. So it, it's going to take somebody uh, somebody else not connected with Newcastle United. It's going to take somebody else to come in and and buy it and sort Gateshead out. Get them a stadium that they can be proud of. It doesn't have to be a big stadium, six thousand seater. Would would that do Gateshead? Absolutely, for where they are. And I just think it's 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 awful. It really is. I, it, it's, I mean, Mike says they're very true words. Alex, yes, it's a disgrace by the council uh, and about the FA Cup replays is disgraceful. Period. Um, uh, Jordy Corp says they, this would be a great investment for the Rubens. They won't be looking at it. They've got a big investment in Newcastle United. That's why they bought us. Um, so uh, as much as I hate to say it, it needs an independent person to come in, like Alex said, somebody just to. To, to to get it get it get it away from the council, and and give Gateshead a, a you know a proper future, not wondering year to year if they're going to survive because of the council cuts and things like that. Um, I, I I really hope they do because it, it they've had a great season and they'll be denied the playoffs. I think it's sh- shambolic from the council, absolutely shambolic to do it this late. Um, Pilo Keith says Gateshead Stadium is very rarely used to its potential, uh, just like we were saying before. I mean, Billy, if you were somebody independent coming in and looking at Gateshead Football Club, uh, you know, what would you think? Would you would you take control, would you buy the football club and then get them away from the state Gateshead International Stadium and and do something else with that? Give them a plan. You'd have to look around the area, wouldn't you, and see if there's anywhere you could build a small stadium with city, maybe eight thousand people in. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's plenty of room there. Um, and certain places of, of, of Gateshead, there's the, the big park, isn't there? In Gateshead, you could kind of do maybe do something there. Can't think what it's called, but it's a massive park in Gateshead. Uh, Swalwell um, Park, something like that, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe there, maybe play at Kingston Park in, in Gosforth. I, I don't know. It's it's. Oh, you said when, it very posh there, Billy. Gosforth. Where did they play years ago? When they when they were actually in the league? Well, they've been they got... in this. They've been at Gateshead International since 1971. Um, so it was before I was born. Uh, I don't know where this. Some, I mean, uh, somebody. No, I don't know. I just don't know. But they were in the league for years and years and years till they got. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they failed to get re-elected after lots of times of being and kind of going up for the re-election. That's how they used to do things. They used to vote on whether the team should stay up or whether the team should be promoted. There was mm-hmm. no playoffs. Um, so you know, it's, it's, it, it, they were a league side for years. So I don't know where they played. People told as people will say in the chat, but I'm not sure where it was. Um, if that's still there, probably not, probably been knocked down. But I'm guessing there's places you can kind of build something there, surely to God. I mean, it, Kingston Park, uh, you know, I mean, that's got the lasses there, it's got the rugby there. There's a lot going on at Kingston Park. So, would they, would they be able to accommodate another team coming in? Probably not. Gateshead, Park, yeah, yeah, Gateshead, Saltwell Park, not Swalwell, of course, it's Saltwell. Um, I just think that, um, they deserve a, something around Gateshead, Alex, that they can play in and, and call home because you know th- this can't go on. It's it, it's you know remember a few but year back they, they had terrible terrible ownership and were in real financial strife. Almost went out of complete business, um, and and now again the, the the fighting about the stadium. They just need somewhere to call home and permanently. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just reading something on Wikipedia, which is actually quite devastating because it goes back to politics again in Russia. Um, so apparently, unveiled plans for a new 8,000 capacity stadium to be built in the town centre opposite the Civic Centre, mm -hmm. uh, formerly the home of North Durham Cricket and Rugby Club. However, after the failure of England's bids to host the World Cup in 2018 or 22, the stadium, which would have acted as a training base for teams to play at nearby St James's Park, was put on hold indefinitely. Um Mm. So that's not an option anymore. And again, we all know that, that that World Cup went to Russia and Qatar and we probably should have had the 2018 one. It was all, a lot of those people got in trouble and then were, were kind of um, banned from football for life. Mm. You were involved in giving Russia the World Cup after the fact, but of course it still had to go to them. So it, again, arbitrary lines in the sand plus corruption on top of that. I mean, it's proved corruption because a few of those people in the vote got, um, got axed, I'm pretty sure, from the council. So... Yeah, it is a big shame, but Paul's right. I don't know where Paul's gone. Hopefully, he should be back any minute. But um, yeah, they, they need their own home. It, it looks like there have been attempts in the last 15 years to try and sort that out. Um, and I this, mean, this maybe, maybe just put are. a comment in there saying that, you know, uh, the council have put a statement out on X saying they've not refused the application. Well, why have Gateshead been thrown out of the playoffs then? Who have said that on Twitter? Well, apparently, Gateshead Council have come out and said on Twitter that they haven't refused. Uh, uh, unbelievable. I mean, you know, if they're getting told they can't play in the playoffs because Gateshead Council, you know, the, the, the FA have said that Gateshead Council have not guaranteed them the 10 year lease. So whose fault is it? It's Gateshead Council. But this is politics, guys. This is politicians. This is people who we know who sit on their asses and lie every single day about everything just to get votes. So you can't take a word of them seriously. They just let people down on a consistent basis. And I, I'm sick of it being football clubs, especially like Gateshead. Uh, just crazy. You know, it, 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 it happened to Darlington. We've seen Darlington, who used to play at Feetums. They were taken over by an absolute monster in George Reynolds, of course, and the rest is history with that new ground in the crap. They could have still been at Feetums to this day. They'd upgraded Feetums. It was, it was a proper, proper football ground, that. You know, but uh, so on on Twitter, I mean, they've lied basically. They mm. flat out lied. So they've put following the announcement from the National League, we would like to clarify that we have not simply refused Gates Gateshead FC's application for security of tenure at Gateshead International Stadium. Although we're currently working to appoint a partner operator for the stadium, we've also been working with the club to find a solution and provide the league with the necessary assurances. This includes a tenure agreement that would allow any new operator to negotiate the terms of the football club. We will continue to advocate for the success of Gateshead FC. Well, we'll know then, because if you had given the assurances, they would have accepted it, mm. which they've not. Exactly. You know, the, 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 they're being told that they can't participate in so, the playoffs. So, so it's, e it's either... So the, the fact that Gateshead Council have come out and said that means that they're saying the National League are lying. Mm. It's Because somebody's got to be lying based on or, that tweet. Or, or the football club, one of the two. It's, yeah. e it's either the council, the football club, or the national league. So well, the one national of the league aren't going to come out and ch and chuck Gateshead out just for no apparent mm. reason. You know, the, the, uh, we we all know it's the council, and we all know that they try and get away with this bullshit all the time. Um, but listen, we will keep you updated on the Gateshead situation as time goes on, and hope to God that they get it sorted. But they, they're not going to be in the playoffs this season, guys. I mean, they, you know, it, it's pretty. Uh, I think that's pretty done and dusted as far as the national league are concerned, which is a an absolute disgrace. Uh, but we will keep you uh, we will keep you posted on that. Now um, today, it seems Billy like West Ham are trying to do their very best to get us into Europe this season. Well, yeah, they've got good good idea against Palace, who have got a bit of form. Um, I think the fact that doesn't I mean people are worried about us playing them now, Palace, but they've played twice since we've last played. We should be okay to play them next week. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be fitter than them. Three days after they've played against West Ham, don't worry about it. We'll be okay. But West Ham, of course, have played Thursday night, put up a great show against Leverkusen. Let's give them yeah, credit for did. that. Yeah, they did. Uh, they didn't win the game. They didn't win the tie. They went out, but they've, they've run the, the bollocks off for, for ninety mm. plus minutes. They've gone to Palace today, and not turned up. It's it's yeah, it's 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 odd. It's um, too many games for them. Maybe not changing enough players, not rotating. Much as we were criticising Eddie, I was criticising Eddie Howe forward in the season. Yeah. Side today was virtually the same side. With Paquette in it, he wasn't playing against um, Leverkusen. Mm. Um, you've got to you've got to rotate your squad if you're playing in Europe. It's simple as that. You can't get by playing the same 
12, 13 players because fitness levels, they're that important these days. Um, yeah, West Ham, they're, they're, they're tumbling down the table now, which is good for us, I guess. Yeah, and, and Alex Palace found a little bit of form of late. Of course, we play them Wednesday night, three days' time. Um, you can, of course, uh, tune into that live commentary on the game right here on Match Day Live on the Tune Review on Wednesday. Um, we go there, but they, they, they may be tired, but we know what Sellers Park's like. We know what the atmosphere can be like. Um, we just have to be professional, I guess, when we go there. But it's, um, it, it, it's a tough game. Yeah, I mean, I'd just like to point out, I do feel a bit sorry for West Ham because they were very much done over by refereeing decisions against Bayer Leverkusen. They looked quite dominant and I, I really, really feel sorry for them. Um, Some of those decisions were disgraceful, which I've seen, into, actually. I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. And I'm at the point now where we, we, we bash a lot of these clubs around us and I think we all need to start banding together now. Palace, Villa whoever it is, West Ham, Fulham, Wolves, Everton, Forest, whoever wants to have a pop at that big six, mm. they're trying to be quite divisive and, and we just need to stick together because and I know this was a European game against Leverkusen and, and normally the, the European refereeing is quite, quite good, but I, I feel sorry for, for Antonio because he, he really didn't get a fair shout. I think because of his size, they just blow the whistle against him every single time. Mm. But anyway, that's by the by. I think that's one of the reasons why they struggled. They were always going to struggle. They gave a lot in that European tie against the yeah. best team in Germany at the moment. So, of course, they were going to struggle. You know, it was one of our lower European sort of teams who gave it a good shot against one of the best teams in Europe. So, fair place to West Ham. Mm. Uh, but Palace, yeah. Glasner's come in, managed at Frankfurt before in Austria. Good, good manager. Good win good win rate, generally, at other clubs. He's got Palace playing well. We, we, we've looked at Palace. We've looked at a lot of Palace players in recent transfer shows. Um, in the last sort of year. Of course, they've got Wharton from Blackburn that mm. we absolutely loved on this channel. We really wanted him at, at Newcastle and he's gone there and he's looking really, really good for the future. Is, Possibly a, an England international in the outstanding making. Outstanding Anfield last week. Absolutely he's, outstanding. He's incredible. And they've got Hughes, who obviously has been at a goodish level for a long time. He's experienced. He's not maybe quite at the technical level that Wharton is. You've got you've got Mitchell as one of the wing backs. You've got Anderson is, is the glue. Klein's moved into that back five as a centre-half. You've got Eze and Elise just behind um, Mateta at the front, who is coming to his own. They play a good shape. They've got good technical ability, a good balance. Um, I'm a little bit scared. However, Billy mentioned, or was it you that mentioned, obviously they've played a lot more football than us. So I'm hoping we're going to be rested and we're going to just go there and absolutely run their socks off. Because I think it's going to be about running and just getting in their faces. Well, I think that's what Eddie Howe um, should be telling them, isn't it? You know, go out there, get in the faces, high intensity from Newcastle United because we've had that time off. They've played um, on Sunday. They're going to be tired. Let's really go at them with, with, with the intensity that we had against Spurs, for instance. You know, we, we can... played three times since we last played. Well, they there played you on go. on Sunday against Liverpool. They played yep. on the Wednesday, Wednesday against whoever it was. And then again today, so... But they've, they've just got some good quality. Like Eze and Elise, I would say, are Champions League quality attackers. Mateta, not the moment. He, he's had to he's had to earn it. He's had to improve and be good enough for this league. And he, he's getting there. He's looking a lot better. Um, Anderson, I would say, is at least the Europa League sort of level centre-half. He's really solid. They've got a lot of good players in that side. I'd yeah. say they're... You know, they've always kind of been in 10th to 14th in recent seasons. Yeah. But they've been quietly recruiting quite well. Um, and I'd say they're kind of unfairly left out of conversations, but they do need their best 11 on the pitch to make a difference. Whereas maybe well, like a team like West Ham might have a bit more depth. Yeah, well, we'll cover that game obviously in more detail on Tuesday night when we do the match preview. Um, look I mean, at, we're talking uh, about referee right. decisions today. Well, the not I was coming on to Nottingham Forest, Billy, right now, actually. You so I was going to... Uh, absolute <laughs> shambolic performance. Uh, and listen, I've... Billy, I mean, I don't know whether you've seen the incidents yourself. Um, I cannot understand the decisions. And, you know, Nottingham Forest have come out and made a statement saying that enough's enough. Um, and, and quite frankly, how can anyone go against that from what you what we saw today? I mean, the one on um, Hudson Adore in the second half was oh. the stonewall blatant penalty you'll ever see. And Ashley Young's gone through the back of him 
played very similar to the one we didn't we didn't get at Anfield a couple of years ago with Fraser and Alexander Arnold. Yes, yes, exactly the same. An yeah. Absolute stonewall penalty, and Mark Dean didn't give it there, and VAR didn't give it there, and they, and the same today. Anthony Taylor as may as well have put an Everton shirt on, and and so be it. Mm-hmm. Um, Ashley Young, I think three times he was at fault, wasn't he, for the, for the penalty shouts? Got away with every one of them. It's like the Premier League are trying to apologise to Everton for deducting the points. Yeah, and, forget, and forgetting that Forrest are also in the same boat. Exactly. Unless they want Forrest out, they may well, want Forrest out. Everton have, been, Everton have been in the Premier League now for, as always. we know, always. They've never been out of it. And maybe they hold a special heart in uh, people's uh, people's heads who make decisions. But, but if, just... if, the, if the VAR official actually is a Luton Town supporter, that's hideously wrong. It's and we well, have some breaking it, news, by the way, in yeah. the last 10 minutes. Uh, double-edged sword here. Good mm-hmm. and bad. What do you want, the good news or the bad news? Oh, 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 Billy, you decide. Give us the bad first. Yeah. Okay, bad news is Minter has been sent off for final. Oh, we knew, well, we that. knew that. Yeah, we knew about that. Good news is they've won the cup. They've won yeah. the cup final. So full-time now, they're officially declared winners. They've they've won the cup. He got booked yeah. twice in two minutes, Stato. Two minutes, yeah, yeah within two minutes. But listen, Minty, uh, oh, he's, he's, he's part. He's, he's part of a, a trophy winning side. That was what we needed. We needed him to go and get a season under his belt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's won a trophy as well. He's had a bit of Champions League experience. It's all good learning, learning um, experience for him. So, yeah. Uh, Nick Thornton says Gary Neville slaughtered for us for the statement. Then admitted he hadn't even seen anything from the game. Uh, that says a lot. And then David T says Carragher was mocking the Forest tweets. Everton fan, maybe. Look, Carragher's a disgrace. He's, he's, he's an fan. absolute. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a disgusting human being at times. Jamie Carragher. We know he is. We, we know what he's done in the past. But to mock the Forest tweets and mock their disappointment at what had happened instead of being a professional and actually admitting that they had three stonewall penalties disallowed is just shocking. And, you know, he's supposed to be a pundit. You can't do that. You know, if we're, do, you know, I know it's not the same, but when me and Billy are doing Match Day Live, we're honest. Yes, we're biased towards Newcastle. Of course we are. We're Newcastle fans. However, if we see something blatant on the pitch, we'll see it. So these pundits can't even do that in a professional way. And Nottingham Forest for me, Billy, uh, uh, you know, the, the, they're in every right to come out and make a statement like that because something something was seriously wrong in that game there. I don't think they've done themselves any favours, though. I mean, well, we, maybe we not. All, but... we, we, we can all see it. We can all see that it's dodgy. But for the actual club to tweet that... I think did, you, opening... did you read the statement, did you? Yeah, there's something about, something about a Luton Town. Well, no, but I mean, it's already out, yeah, because I've got it. Well, apparently they'd made the Luton... Uh, they'd made... Uh, the Premier League aware that there was a Luton Town fan on the VAR, and but yeah. apparently they've done they did nothing about it. They, they made well, them aware way before the fixture, and that nothing was done. Well, I, I don't think that's what they should have been fa- focusing on. I think it was just the decisions in general were poor. Yeah. But, yeah. So they put three extremely poor decisions, three penalties not given, which we simply cannot accept. We warned the PGMOL that the VAR is a Luton fan before the game, but they didn't change him. Our patience has been tested multiple times. Uh, NFFC will now consider its options, which is basically, screw you, we're getting legal now because it's happened too many times. So, I mean, this will be quite funny because it, there might be a lot of clubs follow suit now. Well, Wolverhampton Wonders have certainly got, you know... Yeah. Well, there's so because, many teams got, got you know... Everybody's scared to be that first club because they if you are, are yeah, that yeah, first club yeah. that challenges them, mm. then they'll throw the book at you. But now Forrest has done it. Probably more people can do it now because they can't throw the book at everyone. You can't relegate everyone. We're going to dock points off the whole league. What's the point? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Solomon Emmanuel, stop with the uh, RC comments, please, uh, towards other viewers. Uh, if you keep doing it, you will be banned, full stop. Uh, you keep getting timed out, just stop it. You know, people have opinions, end of story. Um, you know, Anthony certainly isn't childish, so stop calling people out. Just enjoy the show and have normal, sensible discussions, please. Uh, don't cross the line with me on a Sunday night, please. 
Um, Claire says, uh, sick to death of Carragher, always doing commentary on Liverpool games. How is it allowed? Same as Neville with Man United. Because they're the two main core commentators, you know, so it doesn't matter what big game they've got, they get the, you know, their class, Carragher and Neville, as the big boys. Well, uh, Alan Smith, he seems to have an awesome season oh, on Sky. He's oh, always there. Oh, dear. His voice just sends me to sleep. That's, and then today, you know, Hinchcliffe was at the Everton game. Ex-Everton player. Well, it's funny. Because you know who was commentating for being sports today on the cup semi final? Martin Taylor. Mm, yeah, he, he said he didn't want to retire, didn't he? Who apparently did retire, but it was obviously pushed out of Sky. So he's gone to work with his mates. Uh, of course, Keys and, uh, you know, the hairy one. Uh, so there you go. Um, right. Uh, moving on, uh, I want to chat to you guys about Amanda Staveley because obviously I did a video yesterday uh, from my garden with my GoPro, which uh, I'm just getting. The reason I did that yesterday was to test the GoPro, uh, test my uh, wireless microphones to make sure they're all still uh, as they should be, just for when I go and do this, uh, the, the, the Northeast football series when I'm visiting different grounds and stuff like that. So that's why I did it. But Interesting enough, Alex, that Amanda's had to come out. She, she's come back from Saudi and she's seen all the um, the Ferrari on social media and etc. about what happened with, uh, you know, director, not being a director of the now defunct companies, etc. Very interesting that she felt that she had to come out and make a statement. Yeah, no, I mean, she didn't have to. I guess it was just, it was very nice of her, to be fair, because a lot of people... At yeah. that end of of the game and life in those kinds of positions, don't don't tend to communicate. So I thought it was quite a lovely touch. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know a lot of people aren't super knowledgeable about that. A lot of people saw a club, well, saw a, a business connected to Newcastle United on Company's House, and the fact that she was not there anymore. Um, well, I think it said it even said resigned, didn't it, as a director specifically on the company on the Company's House page. So. Difficult to difficult to kind of comprehend if you don't know that. I mean, I don't know the structure. I appreciate there's a lot of different sort of holding companies and the way they do it. Apparently, Alex, I, I don't know how that works. So, when the yeah, once the takeover happened, they set various smaller companies up under the sort of umbrella. Yeah, I mean, it's quite uh, normal, but now defunct, which is why she's no longer a director of, of those companies. But for a lot of people who don't understand that, I mean, I didn't understand that. I, I know it's obviously how they do it, but I don't know exactly what's valid and not valid at this point. So oh. it was nice of her to clear that up. She didn't owe us that, and she did. So nice touch. Yeah, Billy, what do you reckon? Because, uh, you know, we, we know for a fact under previous regimes, we wouldn't have heard anything. Uh, we would have just been kept in the dark about everything. So w when I say Amanda felt she was forced to come out, I kind of mean that in a good way that, you know, she's communicating with the fans. She's putting the fans' minds at rest and she's going to be here for a long time. But we kind of already knew the situation with Amanda. You know, of course, she's going to sell off shares to make money. That's what business people do. She bought the shares, obviously, a lot cheaper than what she's selling them. So she's going to make money. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying what's going on in, in other businesses with Amanda, but she, she's obviously fighting other, other battles as well. And, you know, it's perfectly normal for people to do that to make, to make money in business. Well, she's a successful businesswoman. That's what business people do. They make money. They're not in it to lose money. Um, and she's made money out of these shares. Mm -hmm. And she had to come out because she understands that the fan base, the city, the people of the city of Newcastle upon time, idolise her. And quite what you say, she's the figurehead of our club. She, she's the one, the main contributor to us getting what we've got now back back in the club because we, our club was going nowhere. It was going nowhere but downwards. And Amanda Staveley fought tooth and nail to get the club under her kind of tutelage and with Absolutely. investors in the club. Mm. She didn't give up. It took her five years or four years to get hold of the club she wanted. She fell in love with it at first, first, first glance when she went to that Liverpool game. And she's a figurehead for the club and we all idolise her. Quite rightly so. She's done nothing but good for us. Mm. So for her to come out, transparency was a big thing with, with her, wasn't it, when she, was, when she well, first yeah. bought it? Absolutely. She, first, she, she was saying transparency is a key thing with the fans. Yeah. And and she's 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 proven most of the time to be truthful with that. And she's been yeah. hundred percent honest since the word go. And and you know we've got no reason to doubt Amanda Stavely at all. She's she's put her money where her mouth is. She always comes out and informs uh, the fans of what's going on. Um, yes, yeah, certain instincts communication could be better. But I think Amanda Stavely herself. I think you know the the amount of turnaround she's had to do since the takeover from from the Ashley days. I think what she's done is phenomenal. You know, she's she's 
the face of Newcastle United. She's done all that for the women's team. I think, you know, people just need to re relax and think, you know, she's not doing all this work for nothing. She's going to be here for a long time to come. She's committed to Newcastle United, but she's also committed to the women's team and getting the women's team where they belong in the uh, in the Super League. So, uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was a very interesting statement. Uh, Anthony says, GoPro is great. Just make sure your phone, etc., is capable of handling 5K. Uh, otherwise, just shooting 4K. Well, I shoot in 1080p, mate, because uh, when I shoot in 4K on the GoPro, the battery disappears as quick as my morning dumps do when I flush the toilet. Uh, <laughs> it, it just, you know, it, it's gone. Um, so, you know, when, you, when you're doing YouTube, um, you know, 1080p is kind of what everybody does. Is there, there's, there is some 4Ks. You don't but, need to be seeing us in 4K either. That, that's well, no, I mean, you, you don't need to see my nasal hair and things like that. That's too much for people, guys. You know what I mean? 1080p is fine. Um, you know, so, but, you know, yes, 4K is great as well, but we'll, we'll, we'll see in the future. But I just find that my GoPro batteries, Jesus Christ, even at 1080p, they, they, they go down quite quickly. I remember um, vlogging at the ground, you know, when I used to take it to the ground and vlog before games and interview fans. And I used to turn and look at the battery and think, bloody Nora. I mean, I carry three of them around. That's how good the batteries are on the GoPro. Uh, if anybody's got any um, any idea of how to get a better battery for the GoPro or no batteries that are really good on the GoPro, give me a shout, man. Because uh, they're just, I mean, I've got the Hero 10. I haven't got the latest one. The Hero 10 still way good enough. Um, so, But they cost so much money. I want to look after it. But I, I, I just think the batteries, dear Christ. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, I want to talk about the, the the home kit now because there's a picture of Harvey Barnes appeared uh, on social media uh, in the new kit. Now, call me cynical, right? That to me looks like the same picture of Harvey Barnes when he signed. <laughs> and Billy, I take it you think the same because of that I've laugh. I've not seen it. I've not seen it. Oh, no. right. Okay. Well, uh, I, 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 it just... Yeah, I've seen it. It's the same stance as when he signed Alex. So I think somebody has been very clever. This is just my opinion. I, look, I think they are the new Probably kit, by the way. I, 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 yeah, I, I think it is a Photoshop, but I do think that that is the new kit. It probably is. I, I, I'm still, the jury's still out for me. I'm trying to not, th not overthink it because my initial thoughts were I didn't like it because of the big stripe down the middle. Um, and, it, you know, it's not black and white stripes if it's, if it's white stripes and three black stripes, it's not. They got all the stripe. Stripe proportions are a thing, and you know, we're not. We're not Barcelona. We're not going to play with with one coloured shirt. It's like us. It's like us playing in a Juventus kit, isn't it? It's like us yeah. having a white shirt or a black shirt with just two stripes in the middle. It's. It needs to be stripy. That's the whole point. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, Jury's that, out for me. That's what I said when I saw it. I think it needs more stripes. Um, I've got the photo, so I'm just... Uh, I've I'll just seen it now, yeah. It's I found definitely. the VAR line, by the way. So, Billy, you know you said he was definitely an offside. Um, they drew the VAR line over wan foot. Over wan foot? That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Which has got me questioning it slightly. I'm like, I mean, I, when I saw the first shot of him, I thought it was offside. I thought this is going to cut this to come back, but I didn't actually see the lines. I just expected it to come back straight away. Mm. Uh, look, I... I it's suspicious, isn't it? Anyway, he is this. Uh, this is the, the the picture of Harvey Barnes. Now, <laughs> now, if you look at his his arms, right, there is some very strange, yeah. uh, you know, strange movements or strange indentations. I mean, it's photoshopped, isn't it? So, I mean, it's the same. It, he did that when he signed. You know that that is the same picture, and there's a lot of people. You know, putting this, uh, I think it was footy headlines on, on social, on, on X who, who released it. Um, but look, I, I have a feeling, I mean, look, look where the, look at the Adidas badge. Look how badly that is put on there, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's lopsided for a start. It's not, it's not centralized in the white bar, is it? God forbid um, this is real in any capacity and we're just oh. slating them to pieces for it. Well, no, no, <laughs> I actually think, Alex, that this is the kit for next season. I, yeah, I, I, I think it probably is do. pretty much the kit, but obviously this is photoshopped. It's well, the bespoke uh, Adidas kit at the moment. It's, it's it's the Argentina kit, except with black instead of light blue. Basically. Exactly, yes. I don't like um, it. I don't like it at all. Um, it now, doesn't obviously, look like a Newcastle kit, does it? Nah, uh, didn't we have one a few years ago, the same as this? We were talking about this the other day. Yeah, the um, NTL ones. The you NTL know, the one, yeah. 2000s ones were like yeah. that. But... I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, look, it, 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 
that when I first saw it, I didn't like it. It kind of grew on me, and now I've seen Harvey Barnes in it, photoshopped or not. I'm still not sure. Um, well, he's not going to be happy about his gym work, is he? Because his arms have definitely got a lot smaller. Well, he, his arms have gone like Popeye without the spinach, hasn't it? It's just gone like twigs. Um, so I, I, I don't know how Harvey Barnes will um, kind of... <laughs> Harvey <laughs> Arms. That. That's a good I, one. Harvey <laughs> Arms, yeah, Harvey Arms. Um, uh, but what I do like, guys, is there has been some renders of the one of the away kits, and it is the, the, the sort of white and green with the old NUFC badge, Billy, with the, you know, the NUF and then the C curled well, underneath. There are a few rumours we're going to use an old badge. Mm. Uh, the away kit is claret and blue retro Adidas, and third kit is white with green bits on the shoulders. Um, I think what people need to sort of realise is it, they're probably still very much renders at the moment. They're not at the final stage. Um, I think June the 7th or something was a date that we were given um, – or certainly the media were given as to a, a, a sort of, I don't know whether it's a release or an announcement of the actual kit. Um, so at the minute, it's it's just like new mobile phones, isn't it? You know, you, you, people people put out on YouTube all these tech YouTubers with, um, you know, renders of possible new iPhone 16s, and you know, months before they actually come out, um, you know, people have got leaks of little photos and things like that. And I think that's what's happened here, to be honest. Um, but I, I just don't know. Um, I think Newcastle United is, is synonymous with, you know, the shirt I've got on, black and white, yeah. lots of stripes. Um, I'm, I'm just not sure. Um, I like coffee says something's wrong with Barnes's biceps. Uh, Anthony says, aren't the Adidas stripes on the sleeve too low to put the sleeve sponsor on? Well, yeah, I mean, you know. Um, Gary said his arms are like Popeye, same as me. Uh, he's got a chunk missing from his upper arm. Uh, nobody seemed to point this out on X though, Billy. Every nobody seemed to put a comment on saying, "Oh, it's a Photoshop." Maybe they they wanted to get that badly. I don't know. I'm not a fan of any of it. I'm not afraid. Of, I'm not a fan of the, the white patch on massive white patch on the back. Mm. I'm not a fan of the, the the lacking of stripes. I don't. I just don't like it. Well, if top. if they're going back to um, black name and number, Billy, I think that's why they've got to have the because if it was. You wouldn't be able to see, would you, if it was the the, the black yeah. name on the on the, on a lot of stripes? So I think that's why they've got the sort of patch on the back. Yeah, I don't, well, I don't like it. I've been finished. some crazy football today, by the way, guys. Atletico Madrid completely capitulated and lost two nil to Alaves. Um, we've got a classico at eight o'clock as well. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy football today, and Leverkusen managed to rescue a point away at Dortmund to go forty five games unbeaten now in all competition. Still undefeated, which is madness. And of course, the manager has said that he's staying there next season as well, which is a, a massive bonus for them. You, you can't though, can you? You're never going to do better than that. Ever. Well, no. I mean, look, <laughs> he may want to build something again next season in the Champions League. He might want to give that a go. You know, I remember Leverkusen um, when the likes of Balak and etc. were there and they, they used to give the Champions League a really good run. They were a really strong team then as well. Um, but I think he's, he's wanting to bring the glory days back to Leverkusen. Well, he's, he's doing it. He's, that they can pump some money into him this summer and yeah. try and push for a Champions League. It's possible. Um, call me Swift loves the new kit. We've played Leverkusen in the Champions League, haven't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did indeed. Uh, Harvey Barnes, the hammer slayer, says Julie J. Uh, Mike says it needs more stripes for me. Um, mm. Bring back the old granddad. A lot of people are asking for the granddad colour, Billy. Yeah, it just reminds you of that 95 96 season, isn't it? When we yeah. should have won the league. Yes, mm. um, we, we won't uh, delve too much on that though, Billy. Uh, we will swiftly move to the next comment. Uh, I must admit, says Gary, uh, I like it, but that might be just me being biased towards Adidas. Um, Anthony says, I love the old badge. Uh, hope that's used more on the training gear. It'd be class. I've, I've, Rooted for that badge to come back for donkeys because I remember that badge growing up. Um, and I, you know, we were talking about the other day, Billy, with the old silver kit. Um, you know, with that, uh, I mean, it was the tiniest of tiny blue stars in the middle as the sponsor. I mm. mean, it, it would look ridiculous now, but it, it, you know, back then it was that was Newcastle's away top, that silver or grey, if you like. I saw a, a picture of Billy Whitehurst in it yesterday. There was a, there's a YouTube video about Billy Whitehurst, how he was the hardest footballer that's ever lived. Mm. Um, bare knuckle fight and all sorts. Absolutely, I can't really not argue with that, Billy. I mean, I saw Whitehurst, lunatic. <laughs> he, he was, was mental. Shit. He was shit, but he was a lunatic. 
Well, he was, he, was, he was. He was. I mean, he had all right. He, he did all right for us, I suppose. He wasn't. Um, uh, no, you know, I'm, I'm not putting him, well. I'm, I'm not putting him in the Tony Cunningham, George Riley bracket, Billy. I, I think he was a little bit better than that. Maybe a little bit. Maybe yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I, well, I can remember him once. I went to watching Coventry. The year, I think it might have been the year Coventry won the cup. Actually, played Oxford at home, and Billy Whitehurst literally volleyed Brian Kilcline's face. Yeah. <laughs> Full blast. Oh God. Full blast. Yeah. And claret everywhere. Killer was gone. Just can totally doing the chicken walk and everything. Couldn't walk. And had to be helped off the pitch. And White was sitting there laughing. It's absolutely. Yeah, but the thing is. Apparently, I'd raised a bit by the neck in one game when he wasn't even playing. In this video. <laughs> yeah, he's class. He, honestly. He was, and Harry Redknapp called him down from the stands because Neil Redwood was bullying Brian Dean. He said, Have a word with him. So, in the half time, when the half time he was in the tunnel, he says, uh, Leave Brian Dean alone. Neil Woodard was about to have a go back in because Neil Woodard's meant to be a bit of a hard man. He just picked him up by his throat and said, I just told you, leave him alone, don't go near him. Second half, he didn't go anywhere near him and Brian Dean scored twice and they win the game. By the way, Neil Ruddock, Ruddock uh, is looking rather svelte these days. He's he's uh, lost so much weight. I watched him uh, playing golf with um, Jimmy Bullard earlier. Yeah, yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. He's done, he's done well. He got himself healthy again, hasn't he? Mm. Um, apparently, Jordy Rick says the June the 7th release date uh, was set in the court case with Ashley, which we are now coming on to. Um, now, Alex, Mike Ashley still is bugging around Newcastle. You know, the, the news came out last week that he failed uh, to get an injunction into uh, Newcastle United not selling um, the, the, the home kits in Sports Direct. Uh, he tried to take out an injunction. That was refused. Um, he's still at it. He's a very venge vengeful person, isn't he? We've seen him. Um, he tried to buy Coventry City. He, did, he got turned down for buying that. So what did he do? He went and bought the stadium just to get a bit of revenge back on them. He was like that with our idols at the club, Kevin Keegan, Alan Shearer, to a lesser extent, Rafa and, and Chris Uton. You no, know, they were popular with the fan base. Couldn't have that. Got rid of them. It's nasty, horrible Parasite. Yep. Uh, Connor, thank you for your super chat. Thoughts on nobody celebrating the winning penalty at Manchester United? Well, we, we, <laughs> we, uh, you know, they'd be embarrassed if they did that. So, and, and, well, Hoyland ran to the crowd. And I know it was pretty celebrating. Yeah. Bruno Fernandes' reaction when he scored his the, the, the penultimate penalty, you know, he actually got in the goalkeeper's face and you could literally say, you shouldn't even be here, you're crap. Yeah. Absolute yeah. tossers. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Somebody just said that Harvey Barnes, well, yeah, um, Martin says the, the, the picture of Harvey Barnes, he, he isn't married, but the picture's got a wedding ring on him. <laughs> I didn't uh, remember that, actually. Oh, yes, it has. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. It, it Is probably, he not married? I don't think so, no. Um, I, I think he's got a girlfriend, uh, but I don't think he's married. Uh, well, there but, you go, ladies. 26-year-old first well, teamer. Uh, Absolutely, uh, or earning a fortune. Or uh, guys, I mean, we don't know what anybody's into. Well, it depends what Harvey Barnes is into, I think. And yeah, I think, well, it, of, it, of it, course, it, yeah, yeah, uh, very much. Uh, so. He's had loan spells with Milton Keynes. Oh, okay, we'll send him back to Leicester. <laughs> well, it's not his fault, is it? He had to go to McDonald's. I mean, that's like that's like a punishment, isn't it? Oh, where, where, where am I going? Well, you've been shit, so we're sending you to Milton Keynes. You know, I mean, it's not exactly a, a cosmopolitan place. Well, there's no roundabouts. It? We're just playing squares, just like yeah. Manhattan. Well, it's, just, it's just made up of grey buildings, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's... Concrete cows. <laughs> they have to, uh, there's concrete cows everywhere. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, what's your thoughts on Ashley, Alex? Well, we haven't got that long. We have no, we've only got six minutes left. I mean, I, I just, I, again, part of me just wishes that we just never have to hear about him again and it, we can just be a clean, sort of a clean separation. He needs to sod off now and we can crack on with what we're doing. But there is another slightly more childish version of me that wants him to slip up and us to just go for the jugular. I hope he sl slips up in some capacity in a legal way. Um, Christ, I, which... thought, I thought you were going to say, I hope he slips up, falls over, and rips his jugular. <laughs> no, 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 no. I well, just I, I hope he makes a mistake in his business, in, in, in a business decision, or in how he's approached something, mm. even if it's accidental, because because of just the way he's operated for, for a very long time. He's a very evil man. Um, and I, I he's a very petty man. And I, I just hope he messes up and that somebody can just sue him and just, just take all of his toys away from him. 
He doesn't deserve any toys anymore. Put him on the naughty step. Mm. Uh, well, he has tried to, uh, you know, John says there as well, he has tried to appeal and that was thrown out as well. What a shame. Absolute shame. Uh, Michael says, I can see Adidas making this comeback being a special one by them bringing uh, back a bit of retro into the new kit. Well, aren't they supposed to be going to be bringing one of the old kits back? Um, I don't think they're going to be bringing it back for the team to wear, but I think it's more for supporters. I think they're bringing a retro kit back for the supporters to buy, uh, which would be very, very nice. Okay. Uh, I mean, I can yeah. think of a few that were that I'd love to see back. Well, I've um, just seen something very interesting about Harvey Barnes as well. Um, he played in the Toulon tournament for England in 2017, and he got the uh, golden boot in it, and he got into the tournament best 11. Mm-hmm. The Toulon tournament. See, it's not called that anymore. The M- Maurice Ravello tournament, it's called. So oh, yeah. watch it in the summer. If, if yeah, that's the one that, do. well, that's the one we has been in it and... Yeah, but remember, we were we went on, been it. <laughs> we went on to watch Ekatiki, didn't we? Ekatiki, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he lasted what three minutes. Um, it was the <laughs> well, most this, pointless this year they've got a long we've ever done. In there. They've, I think Qatar, Saudi are in it this time. Mexico are back in as well because, of course, we watched um, Santiago Munoz before he uh, we did. We thought he was going to be part of the team, and then they just went, "No, sorry, we're not extending the loan." A bit weird. <laughs> But we've done it again. We, we keep putting we pe- keep putting these kids on the bench and then announcing, oh, no, no, we're not going to keep them. We were just putting them on the bench for fun. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, Luke says, why are the owners not going after uh, for all the Sports Direct advertising he had and what he paid? Uh, well, I don't think... That's I can't, really. Yeah, he owned it then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, can't, you can't go after somebody for, you know... That's like saying, oh, that you know, you buy a used car and someone has took a dump under the seat. That's not their problem anymore. Um, I don't know why I used that analogy. I just did. Um, <laughs> Rather specifically. Uh, no, no. Did, Does that happen have, to you, Paul, by any chance? <laughs> no, but I may have done it to somebody. Uh, but that's another. <laughs> I haven't, by the way. That's a joke. A, a, a joke. Um, but I, I'm. Sh- I'm sure that, well, I know somebody that did leave a one under the floorboards when they moved house once, but that that's, you know, leave that wasn't one. me. <laughs> well, just a, just a, just curled up a blind deal under the floorboards, Billy, you know what I mean? Um, probably not very pleasant to find in, in, in the future, but uh, there, there you go. That's just, uh, that's just the way it is. That'd be the worst edition of Time Tunnel ever made, wouldn't it, that one? Oh, God, yes. yes See, this yes. is where the conversation just naturally goes to when you start talking about Mike Ashley, guys. It is, well, exactly. Yeah, it, it turns to shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Johnny Green says it was pretty... Oh, I've got no idea what that comment's all about. Something going on in the chat. Uh, Ruffy Benissian says, uh, basically, Ashley's legal team were told the reasons uh, the out forward for the injunction was... Yeah, rubbish. the response was hilarious. It was like... It was, it was essentially, we told you no the first time. Nothing's changed. Therefore, the appeal was nonsense because we're just going to tell you the same thing. So go yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. It was very bluntly put. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. It certainly was. Uh, basically, Ashley's legal team were told they lost as the reasons they put forward to get the injunction were legal garbage. Uh, Peter says, "My old, uh, when my old man moved into his house back in the seventies, there was a turd in the sink." Good lord! Wow, uh, George, I do apologise that you're eating your Sunday dinner. Um, uh, it's Billy's fault. Um, uh, Davy says the owners will treat Ashley with the disrespect he deserves. He means nothing to them. Uh, a bit of dirt on their shoes, indeed. Now, uh, just before we leave you, uh, Alex, do you want to tell everybody what show we've got coming up tomorrow? Because it's it's a very good one. Uh, which um, you know, it, 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 we we've been given our homework by Alex, basically. Um, so, Alex, do you do you want to explain what tomorrow night's show is going to be all about? I can indeed. So being as it's the day before, it doesn't give other people much of a chance to copy it. So although if we do see them coming out tomorrow, you know you know whose idea it is. Um, to be fair, there have been a couple of these generalizations sort of around on YouTube and, and social media. So everybody's going to do one at some point. But this is our fun version for us to do. It's the big TTR rebuild. So the Toon Review rebuild of Newcastle United in the summer. Uh, so obviously there's going to be somewhat of a rebuild. A bit of you know a lot of contracts expiring, maybe a couple of sales and, and a lot of new faces through the door. I think it's it's a pretty it's a given that that's going to happen. So tomorrow we're going to do the rebuild, but what our rebuild is going to be. So it will be what mine would be, what Paul's would be, Billy and Sam. We've got a few honourable mentions in here as well. We've may, potentially got Adam P's summer rebuild and a few other people that we've been in contact with. Um, so there'll be some nice honourable mentions of what people have. Have sort of banded around as their rebuild. So it's going to be um, 
what what are you actually get, who are you going to sell who's leaving free transfers what's your transfer kitty it's got to be realistic within reason and yeah. then who would we go for so the general rule of thumb if you guys want to play along and think about it tonight you can do uh, we're going to go for five ish incomings for, for for the actual the whole summer um, obviously you can change that if you want to go for six or seven or three or four, it's up to you. As long as it's fairly realistic, try and keep within the realms of realism. If you go and sign Mbappe, we're not going to read it out. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. make Daniel sure you think about free transfers. Mbappe. Gives you a chance to have a look at some of the websites we use on the show. Have a look at TransferMarked, FBREF. Go and have a look at who's available on non-contracts for free. Um, potentially some loans in. Again, loans are harder to gauge, but if you can justify it, justify it if you say this guy probably won't get game time we might he might get loaned he might come to us fine if you can justify it by all means so do your free transfers actual transfer fees loans so we're going to do the big rebuild tomorrow and we'll see what all of our squads are going to look like and we'll put them all up on the graphics there you go mm. uh yeah me, 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 me and billy are thoroughly looking forward to spending the day just um <laughs> Just try to use maths. Um, yes. Uh, Peter, thanks for your super chat. Yeah, Bruno bought... Uh, I was looking at a house in Darius Hall. Yes, he is. Uh, we spoke about that a few days ago. Uh, yeah, so it's it's going to be uh, a, a brilliant show. Davey T says, I'm having an endoscopy tomorrow. Uh, hoping I'm with it for that show. I'm sure you will be, Davey. Just take a big swallow, mate. Like a Dutch hooker, you'll be fine. Um, that is what an endoscopy is, isn't it? Down the throat. Uh, I mean, I know they can go... It is! I know they go the other way, but that's called something else. Um, I'm pretty sure it's an endoscopy. Bell, bell endoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Friday, Billy. <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry we have to leave you with it, with that final comment from Billy Trey, but the man is a disgrace, as you guys well know. Uh, but we, we couldn't live without Mr. Trey. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for joining us on this Sunday evening. If you have enjoyed the show, guys, please remember, Hit that like button if you haven't already done so. Very, very important for the channel that we keep those likes coming in. And also, don't forget, if you're new and like what you see, please do subscribe. We're over 28,500 now, uh, heading towards 29. And, of course, 30 will have a big celebration show. So tell everybody about the channel. Um, but uh, I, I'd just like to point out one thing before I go. Uh, Paul Gallant said on an earlier video today that Newcastle United have a huge game at the end of the season in their final Premier League game against Tottenham Hotspur in Australia. Uh, I will leave you with that. Um, but anyway, thank you so much. Please do subscribe. Hit the notification bell, which will let you know when we uh, upload any videos or we schedule the live shows. Uh, and please enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we'll see you back for the big Tune Review rebuild tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Don't miss it. It'll be a fab show. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday night, guys. Good night. How are the lads and lasses? Come back and check on some breeze.